Hey, welcome back to the channel. Please remember that while I did work as a dealership master technician for 17 years, I'm currently in no way affiliated with any automotive manufacturer. All opinions expressed are my own and any and all trademarks are the property of their respective owners. Today, I'm going to show you how to replace the engine coolant on this 2024 Toyota Prius. Start by opening the hood. Make sure you do this service with a cold engine because if the engine is hot and you open this uh, cap here, you might have steam and hot coolant shooting out of there. And that would not be pleasant. Okay, so let's take the radiator cap off. Either drive the front wheels of the vehicle onto ramps or lift the front of it up. Toyota does provide you with a lift point in the front, but it's really difficult to access in the center of the vehicle. Um, I always lift it up by the pinch welds right here. So you have this reinforced section and uh, make sure to put jack stands under it. Uh, don't just work on it supported by a jack because those can collapse and uh, get you badly hurt or killed. Well, the single front lift point that they provide is this big bolt right here but it's so deep under the vehicle, I can't see how almost any jack can reach there. So that's why I lifted by the pinch welds on the unibody on the sides. Now you need to get this shield off. You don't technically have to remove the whole shield. You need to just access uh, the one corner of it, but I'll take the whole thing off so that uh, we can see what things look like underneath there. Um, it's pretty stiff, so if you just remove a corner of it, it's kind of hard to bend it out of the way also. So you have uh, a number of clips around the edge of it here. And you just use a trim removal tool or a flat blade screwdriver to uh, pick them up and uh, pull them off a bit. Okay. And now you have uh, four 10 millimeter head uh, bolts to take out. And now you can uh, pull the shield out in this direction. So the engine coolant drain is this top one right here, not this one. This is for the inverter system. This top one right here is for the for the radiator and the engine coolant. And there is the little uh, drain nipple on it right here on the side. So you want to install a 5 16 diameter hose on it so you can drain it down into a suitable container. So let's get our 5 16 of an inch hose and get it onto the drain spout and then uh, place the other end of it into your drain container. And now uh, open the drain valve and uh, allow the coolant to drain out. If you open it too much, you're gonna have coolant leaking out here past the threads, which might make a bit of a mess. So open it just enough for it to start draining out of the hose. Okay, and now wait for a bit. Okay, so <clears throat> now that the coolant stopped draining, you can close the uh, drain right here and just tighten it up nice and snug by hand. It's got an O-ring on it, so it doesn't need to be extremely tight. Just tight enough that it doesn't loosen off. Um, the spec for the total coolant amount is about one and a half gallons, but uh, you'll only be able to drain probably just under a gallon out of it. Okay, and now we can uh, take the drain hose off. Just uh, wipe off any coolant that's still remaining on there. 
Now let's reinstall this uh, splash shield cover. You just need to get it under the front shield. Okay, slide it under like this and then go ahead and uh, reinstall all the clips that were previously removed. Now get the four bolts in. The torque spec on them is uh, very light. It's 66 inch pounds. So don't uh, overdo it when you're tightening them. I mean, you don't need to use really a torque wrench on these ones, but uh, just don't go crazy on them. You can just double check them with a little wrench. All right, that's good. Okay, now we can install a funnel for filling the coolant and uh, check the links below the video in the video description for where to purchase the funnel and the coolant to do this job. Use the Toyota Super Long Life Premix coolant now, depending on your area, it will be either 5545 premix or 5050. Here in Canada, it's a little bit stronger concentration because we get uh, really cold temperatures. And then fill the radiator, uh, do it very slowly. That's the trick because if you just dump a bunch of coolant in there, it can create airlocks and it will be harder to bleed. So just pour it nice and slow, take your time and uh, fill it until you see some coolant standing in the funnel. Now the funnel is full, you can grab this uh, rad hose and uh, squeeze it a few times just to uh, help get any bubbles out of there. And after that we're going to uh, run the engine. So you need to uh, run it to circulate the coolant around and warm it up. To do that, you'll need to put the vehicle into uh, inspection or maintenance mode. And uh, just so you know, the coolant replacement interval on this model is the first time you do it at 100,000 miles. And after that, every 50,000 miles. So let's go get the engine running. Okay, so first thing you wanna do is uh, turn the power on without touching the gas pedal or brake pedal. So press the button twice. Okay, so now we have ignition on. Okay, now you have the vehicle in park. Press the gas pedal twice. One, two. Now hit the brakes and move it over to the left to shift it into neutral. Now press the pedal twice again. And now press the park button to put it in park. And press the gas pedal twice again. Okay, now you will see that you have this CDY2E come up on the dash. So now press the brakes and press the power button. Now you will see even though that it shows the vehicles in EV mode, it will run the engine continuously. So now you can do whatever you're planning to do. You have these warning lights on, that's totally normal um, because it's in maintenance mode right now. This will run the engine. Uh, you can complete your uh, coolant bleeding process. So you can see the air bubbles coming out of there. And uh, what they want you to do is to rev it up by giving it gas for about 10 seconds and then let it idle for another 10 seconds and then rev it up and let it idle and do that about three, four times.
So keep doing that until the bubbles stop coming out. And uh, they tell you to check that the thermostat is open by holding the hose and seeing if there's coolant circulating. I find it's a little bit hard to, you know, feel when that happens. What I like to do is um, turn the heater on full blast. And uh, when the heater is running on full heat and you have uh, hot air blowing out while the engine is at idle, that tells you that it's uh, pretty well bled out. Well, it's been running for a few more minutes. Uh, there's no more air bubbles coming out and uh, it's idling and the heater is blowing really, really hot air. So I'm happy with this. We can uh, shut the engine off and that will also automatically take it out of the maintenance and inspection mode. Now we can open the overflow tank and then uh, put the stopper into this funnel, take it out and then uh, fill the overflow tank to the max line. Well, it spilled a little bit here, but the max line is right here. So. Add a bit of coolant slowly until it's right at the max line, which is here. And then we can button it all up. Just wipe off a little bit of the spill. You can wash it off with water later too, if you want. Take this cap off. Install the radiator cap and uh, reinstall this guy. So after you drive the vehicle a couple of times, just double check the coolant level and make sure that it's, uh, you know, close to the max line with the engine cold. When it's hot, the level will rise. When it's cold, it will drop. So uh, you may still bleed a tiny bit of air once you drive it. So in a day or two, just check it. Uh, let it sit for a few hours so it cools down and it should be right at the max line. If it isn't, just top it up a little bit. And uh, there you go. Engine coolant replacement is completed. Thanks for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more Toyota Prius maintenance and repair videos. See you next time. Cheers.